quietly and has been doing it since what? The Unholy, right? Yeah, that was one of the first ones. Okay, yeah. do you remember The Unholy in 1988? I mean, this is he was a kid stumbled into this business. So I'm honored to know this guy. I don't know how far we've gotten in this Q&A, or what, if it is even a Q&A, you're just taking questions from the audience. I was just doing a kind of a basic makeup introduction. And have you talked about your, your storied past yet? A little bit. Okay, where you came from, who what you, you are, remember about it? what you do, what you remember about it. Okay, I'm just going to take over the show. Yeah, so, go for, please. I'm, I'm prepping some makeup here. I'm going okay, to okay. grab somebody out of the audience and do a prosthetic on it. Okay, and where are we now for questions, Paul? Bring it on. Okay, who's got a question for this living legend right here, right in front of me? Yeah, How do you seal your foam latex? Do you got to seal it, put the paint on it? Uh, Prozade. Prozade or, or Beta Bond is a, is a kind of an, an acrylic emulsion. It was de designed in the 80s. and and pretty much that seals any kind of foam latex. Foam is a porous material, so anything you put on it is going to sink in. If you were to put just blood on it, some areas of the foam are more porous than others because it's kind of an imperfect surface, so it would sink in. So you have to seal it. So prosade is pretty much the best bet. You can seal it with latex, just straight latex over the top, but then when it moves, you have like a dual layer, kind of a wrinkly thing going on. Are you, are you a special effects artist yourself or a budding? I, I, you know, I, I, I dabble. So right. that, that's about it. I'm nowhere near. Everybody it's, uh, the old devil. <laughs> Are there any other uh, training over here? You are an artist, or you're? No, no, no. I just want to ask. Okay, stand up, man. Okay. Um, who's the uh, most finicky person that you've ever put a makeup on? Ever, everyone heard that? The biggest prick you've ever put makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> um, actors, by definition, don't like me. <laughs> they really don't. I'm, I'm the blood guy. I'm the guy that makes things sticky. I always say, I don't make you look better, I make you look worse. So actors, you can have the nicest guy in the world, the nicest girl in the world. They sit in your chair and after about an hour and a half they just want to leave. They just hate you. So, um, most actors are pros though, so it's part of their job, but really the, the job itself is, is, is horrible. You know, it's like, we do our best to seal the skin and protect the skin, especially if you're in a long-standing TV show. Anybody seen the new TV show, Defiance? Yes. It's on sci-fi? Yeah, I do that show. So, so what's important on a TV show like that is to, this is the sense-off from Defiance. Mm -hmm. The things to remember is, if an actor's in makeup five, three, four, five times a week, every single week for 52 weeks, you've got to look after their skin. So actors, some actors break out, some actors don't. You just do your best. As far as um, horrible actors, well, I hate to say it, but Doug Bradley really gave me a hard time on Hellraiser 3, and I gave it right back. <laughs> but for the most part, a actors are all pros, so you roll with the punches. You know, just before we take another question there, I mean, one story you told me, uh, the late John Ritter, who everybody knows and loves from Three's Company, was also in um, Bride of Chucky, right? Yes. And you had some great, great experiences with him. Making him. What did you do to John in that movie? I don't recall. Um, well, John plays a sheriff in the movie, and uh, Chucky wants him dead. So he lines up a bunch of nails on a dashboard. And uh, John's leaning in the car to do something, and they let off the airbags, blows all the nails into his head, and pales him, and he falls down. Now, the irony is, I did Pinhead for Hellraiser 3. So this was written in as a Pinhead joke. Because John Ritter is lying there dead with all these nails impaled, and Chucky looks over and he goes, oh, it looks familiar. <laughs> this is kind of funny. So, so for John, we did little foam latex appliances all over his face with little plates and like big nails. They were like six inch steel nails. But we also made these cool dentures that go in his mouth with pin, with nails mounted in the gums. So they actually distorted his lips. So he looks like his face is more twisted than it actually is. And then we made a big kind of prosthetic dummy for him as well. But he's, he's like, he was probably talking about people that aren't nice. John is probably the sweet, the late John Ritter, sweetest guy I've ever glued makeup on. He was so generous and so just lovely to be around. And it also helped that, um, who directed uh, Last Picture Show? Bogdanovich? Yeah, Bogdanovich. Yeah, so I'm sitting there doing the makeup on John, all of a sudden I tap on my shoulder, excuse me young man, do you mind if I talk to my friend? And it's Peter Bogdanovich. So they sit and talk about old Hollywood for two hours while I'm making this guy up. So for me, it's like, don't even pay me. I'm just going to sit and listen to you guys talk. So it was, it, was, it was pretty awesome. So where's the book, Paul? The book? Why don't we have the book? I mean, this is now like decade three we're on now you're working on. You've walked with giants. You've done it all. Where's the book? Hmm. Where's the grand illusions by Paul Jones? <laughs> well, well, the wit... The weird thing is, grand, grand illusions, I mean, you know, I, I, I was a kid of the 80s, so I grew up with Tom Savini, so I've actually worked with Tom, so 
and he's still up there on a pedestal for me. I mean, Tom's the man. And he brought the, the essential book, Grand Illusions, it came out, 80, I think I got it for my birthday, which is like 85 or something like that. I think it was actually like 82, 85. Was it really? We got it in England in 85. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but surely, <laughs> Grand Illusions is where I was at. Like, the basics are in that book. Anything that's not in that book, you really don't need to know if you're starting out. So I don't think anything I could tell you would, would add to that. I mean, my old boss, Bob Keane, guy I worked with in Hellraiser back in England, Nightbreed, uh, he used to say that uh, it's not the stories of onset that people want to know about, it's the stories from offset. So he was going to write a book called Kiss and Make Up. But the stories he told me, he told me this one story from Empire Strikes Back. And the rap party for Empire Strikes Back was on the Dagobah set. So it was muddy and there's vines everywhere and they built this kind of like dance floor in the middle of the lake and you had to go across this gantry to get to it. And the producer's daughter was 17 and she wore a very tight-fitting white dress. And she was really into the monsters. So Bob and Nick Maley and a couple of other guys were like, oh, well, we'll show you around the effect shop. It's, you've got to come through here. So they had to climb over this big muddy hill. Now, muddy, slippy, white dress, not a good idea. <laughs> so Bob and Nick are clambering over these hills, trying to stop this young girl, who's the producer's daughter, from slipping in the mud. They get to the makeup room. Thank you very much. The great, great kind of show and tell. She gets back to her dad. Her ass is covered in muddy handprints. From Bob and Nick, who were trying to stop her from slipping in the mud. Yeah, they, they uh, never lived that one down. We got some more questions for the talented Mr. Jones. Right in the back there. Um, what's the biggest jump in the whole few of them, I guess, huh? The biggest jumps, the biggest advances, the biggest things that kind of change the game, I guess, is what we're talking about. Besides CGI, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, actually, it's some, something I'm doing right now. Uh, a guy named Christian Tinsley, uh, for a movie called Passion of the Christ, they had a scene where Christ gets flayed, and it was an entire body, amazing makeup, and it's all kind of like ripped skin appliances. Now, in the old days, you would have used foam latex or... I don't know, gelatin, I guess. Now, they, were, they weren't shooting in a, in a cold climate. It was going to be played every single day, and they didn't want to spend eight hours doing the makeup. So, we used to use a material, well, we still use a material called Bondo, which is a prosade glue, which is a liquid, left to dry, and it goes really thick and kind of gummy. And we use it for filling edges and filling seams and getting a bit of imperfections. Now, prosade will dry quite thick, and it's kind of translucent, very, very sticky. So Christian said, what if we just thicken this stuff up and put it in a mold and then let it dry and then just stuck it on someone's skin? So you make the prosthetic out of the glue that you glue it on with or you used to glue it on with. So he came up with this technique and they're called Tinsley transfers. And you know the tra you know the kids' tattoos you used to get in bubble gum and you kind of peel it off, stick it on the skin and wet it and peel it off? So he found a manufacturer of that paper and sticks the paper to the prosthetic peels off the backing, sticks it on the skin, sprays water on it, peels it off, like self-sticking appliances. So he came up with this technique, and it's now an industry standard. It's changed the way we do makeups. You could do old, oh, Benjamin Button, Greg, a friend of mine, he did all the makeups, or half the makeups with transfers, just like foreheads and eye bags and jowls, things that you would spend hours gluing on. He'd get these things on in minutes now. And they're, they're made of glue, so they stick all day and they come off at the end of the day when you want them to, and they're waterproof. It's like really has changed the industry. That's like the main thing for makeups. Silicon. Silicon the prosthetics now. Well, this is one of the Erathian makeups from, uh, from uh, Defiance. So it's one of, one of the male ones. So this is a translucent material. You paint it to look like skin. It moves like skin, and it lasts all day. So this now, the difference with foam and this, foam, you had to paint it to look real, and you had to light it to look real. This stuff is a translucent material, so this absorbs light as opposed to reflects light. So now, you don't have to work as hard. You don't have to have any talent, really. The materials do it for you. Trust me, I know I've been winging it for many years. <laughs> but sil silicon is where it's at, you know. Uh, this is the industry standard, but I always say, well, a few friends of mine say that, uh, foam, uh, sorry, silicon for show, foam for a pro. Start with foam latex, learn how to paint it well, and then use silicon, and your job's half done. Just 